Hey, this is Ryan of Happy Healthy Vegan. So it's a pretty much well-established fact by now that going vegan, going plant-based is the best thing you can do to help fight climate change. In fact, that's what the United Nations has been urging people to do, saying that we must immediately act and change how we eat and consume way less meat if we want to halt climate change. So it comes as a shock when I go on the internet and see headlines like these, that meat is crucial for feeding the planet and that going vegan is not going to save us from climate change. What is going on? So what I really want to know now is what scientifically peer-reviewed research is making such bold claims. So I jump into this article in the Telegraph and it says that two um, researchers, scientists, spoke at a panel recently in London. So this is not from a peer-reviewed study, it's two researchers talking to people in London. The article is so sensationalistic. It begins by saying meat is crucial for feeding the planet, leading scientists scientists have said as they warrant it is not more environmentally friendly to go vegan well this is just this needs to be backed up because there's such a enormity of research saying otherwise let's go to the cowspiracy facts page here and just see all these studies many of which are from the united nations and national agencies like the usda all pretty much saying the same thing about how harmful animal agriculture is for our planet so let's see exactly what these two scientific expert said. The first one here is Professor Jif Sim. And if we look at his research background, you'll see he's an animal breeding specialist and the leader of a team into livestock genetics. So let me know down in the comments if you think this is probably a sign that he's deep in the pockets from the beef and dairy industries. So anyway, Professor Sim says, often the argument is made that going vegan would minimize land use. And the modeling studies that have been done demonstrate that's not the case. Interesting, because in Cowspiracy, I remember a scene that shows that not only is land use improved by going plant-based, that pretty much every other factor that's involved with producing food is improved. A vegan diet produces half as much CO2 as an American omnivore, uses 1 11th the amount of fossil fuels, 1 13th the amount of water, and an 18th of the amount of land. And let's compare burgers to burgers, because there's been studies that have compared how much land use is needed to produce a beef burger versus a Beyond Burger or an Impossible Burger. And in both cases, the plant-based burgers won by a landslide, over 90% less land required for the plant-based burgers. All right, so this is probably my favorite quote from Professor Sim. Meat has massive social benefits? Hmm, it's an important source of dietary protein. Well, I mean, it's not a required source of dietary protein. It's really easy to meet your protein requirements by eating a sensible, balanced, plant-based, or vegan diet. He says energy, no, protein is not used for energy. It's more for muscle repair than energy. That's your carbohydrates and highly bioavailable micronutrients. Even small amounts of animal source food have a really important effect on the development of children in the developing world. I mean, this is the old protein gap theory, which was popularized after World War II, which has long been debunked, but people like Professor Sim and Chris Cressers still go on talking about this. I would really love to see what evidence Professor Sim has for any of those claims he just made there, because the official position of the British Dietetics Association says otherwise. And need I remind you that they are providers of evidence-based information. I refer to the British Dietetics Association because these two researchers are from Scotland. And the BDA says a well-planned vegan diet can support healthy living in people of all ages. And again, this position is arrived from evidence, not just making stuff up. So this next quote here is from the other professor researcher we haven't seen from yet, Professor Mike Coffey, and he says, it's completely unnecessary to go vegan. Really, how so? He says, if, if everybody went vegan, not sure how that would happen, but if everybody went vegan, it would be devastating for the UK environment. Really, how so? He says, animals bred for food, livestock, help boost biodiversity. I mean, this runs completely contrary to all the evidence that I've seen before. I would like to see his evidence because if we have a look here at the United Nations FAO Committee on the report entitled Livestock's Long Shadow and read through this section here entitled Livestock's Impact on Biodiversity, they paint a much different picture. 
This UN report says clearly that livestock play an important role in the current biodiversity crisis as they contribute directly or indirectly to all these drivers of biodiversity loss at the local and global level. So that would include the United Kingdom. They further say livestock are one of the major drivers of habitat change, deforestation, destruction of riparian forests, drainage of wetlands, be it for livestock production itself or for feed production for livestock. So you got to ask yourself, how can this be? As a single professor here, Mike Coffey, debunked the entirety of the United Nations FAO committee? I think not. What is going on? My suspicion is that this professor, like the first one, is also in the pockets of the beef and dairy industry. So once again, let's go over to his university page and see what he specializes in. And no surprise, he's a professor of livestock informatics, animal breeding, and livestock genetics. Yes, livestock genetics. So instead of following the recommendations the United Nations to help defend ourselves from the ravages of climate change and protect our planet from biodiversity loss as is being caused by animal agriculture, Professor Coffey would rather have us continue supporting the beef and dairy industries through consuming what they're working on, a new genetically modified cow. Yes, you heard that right here. A GMO cow that's been engineered to grow even quicker than conventional cows and produce slightly less methane. So it's pretty obvious that the beef and dairy industries are losing if they're denying their role in biodiversity loss and proposing genetically modified cows as the solution to help fight climate change. Wouldn't it just be easier, simpler, and way more effective to not even produce cows genetically modified or otherwise and eat what the United Nations recommends, that we switch to plant-based diets to help fight biodiversity loss and help fight climate change? So anyway, <laughs> leave your questions and comments down below. Let me know if you know any more about these two professors, if you know if they have known ties to the beef and dairy industries. My suspicion is, is yes, judging by their areas of expertise and research and it's my guess that the beef and dairy industries are using them somehow to put uh, some some misinformation out there to put doubt in people's minds that oh maybe i can keep on eating as much meat as i want i don't need to give up meat and seed market share to plant-based alternatives to help fight climate change so anyway, leave your question comments down below hit like share this video and remember guys this is a war that's why it's more important now than ever to vote vegan Yes, I'm running for city council in Long Beach, District 2. If you live in Long Beach, you can vote for me next year in March. And if you live anywhere in the United States, you can contribute to my campaign. Please, everyone, go check out my website, ryanlum.net. And before we go, I'd like to give some big shout outs to our latest supporters on Patreon. D, Vidisha, and Dante. Thanks so much. Your contributions help us to produce this show on the reg. And if you'd like to support what we do here, I'll put the link up in a card and down in the show notes. And we have really cool rewards for you guys. So thanks so much. Round.